Good morning. Welcome to Business Today. I am Omar Kaltungo. Now, the Manufacturers Association of Nigeria has disclosed plans by the members to list their share on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Already, three members of the group are currently working out modalities with the exchange to fast track every listing requirement. The Director General of the Association, Shogun Ajayi Kadu, during the association's bell ringing ceremony at the exchange in Lagos last Wednesday, assured that more members had, had also indicated interest to list their shares on the market. He expressed the members' readiness to leverage opportunities in the market to raise capital and access cheap funds for expansion and increased productivity. He added that the association's partnership with Nigerian Stock Exchange will expose the members to the need to list on the exchange and grow the sector and the economy as a whole. He said they will sensitize other members to get involved on the Nigerian Stock Exchange that there is a big opportunity for manufacturing companies listed on the exchange. He however pointed that they are happy that the exchange rate is coming down, but the challenges in respect to accessing forex is worsening due to what is happening in the international market as regards the crude oil price and the activities of militants in the Niger Delta and that the country's foreign reserve is going down steadily and therefore there is no enough money to put into the foreign exchange market. Noting that the government and central bank are doing their best but there are some challenges. The government of Spain has revealed plans aimed at setting up Spanish manufacturing companies among other businesses in Nigeria, which is targeted at exploring economic potential and building business relationships with Nigeria. This is even as an official trade delegation has scheduled a visit to Nigeria in May 2017. The delegation, having discussed having discussions with government agencies and familiarizing itself with the business environment in Abuja between May and 8, May 8th and May 9th, and meeting with private sector operators in Lagos on May 10th, 2017, before leaving for their home country. Spanish Ambassador to Nigeria, Alfonso Bonovo Sabesten de Erico, on Wednesday, dropped this hint when he paid a courtesy visit to the Minister of Budget and National Planning, Senator Udoma Udo Udoma in Abuja. According to an official statement released by the media advisor to the minister, Akpadem James, and made available to journalists, the move is part of government efforts to attract foreign investment into the country to boost the economy. The Erico said it was time the two countries looked into the future to find more ways of being mutually beneficial to each other, particularly now that the country has a government that is sold to good governance principles. The ambassador said Spain has been investing in Europe over time and now needs to move its focus to Africa, with Nigeria as a preferred destination because of the country's huge market potentials. That is why they are bringing in Spanish companies to know the country and also explore invest investment opportunities that are available. He said though the number of Spanish companies already doing business in Nigeria is increasing, they planned trip is very special as the focus will be on some very specific areas including construction, energy, environment, water and sanitation. Derico told the minister that he would appreciate the full involvement of the Ministry of Budget and National Planning and other relevant federal government agencies in facilitating the realization of the planned visit as it has enormous potentials of enhancing trade relations and economic growth between the two countries. The ambassador stressed that Nigeria and Spain have enjoyed long-lasting political and economic relations, adding that the time has come to deepen the relationship with further investment in some sectors of the Nigerian economy. Udoma, while acknowledging the contributions of Spain to Nigeria's economy over the years, particularly in the oil and gas sector, said the Nigerian government is excited about the planned visit and assured it will be fully involved in ensuring its success. On the visit of Spanish companies to Nigeria, this is something that we will welcome, according to the minister. It is something we have been looking forward to, something that we are encouraging. We believe you have a lot to offer us and the Spanish companies will find Nigeria a convenient place to do business. We are improving our source of doing business and ease of doing, doing business template and making sure that anybody who wants to do business in Nigeria has a much easier time, quote and unquote. He pledged the readiness of the ministry not only to support the proposal of bringing in the companies to Nigeria, but to liaise with the Ministry of Industry, Trade and Investment, the Nigerian Investments Promotion Council and other relevant 
agencies of government to facilitate the project. The minister told the Spanish envoy that Nigeria is very interested in expanding its agricultural potentials, solid mineral exploitation, and infrastructural development, particularly in the area of roads, rail, and power. Concerning infrastructure, he informed, the, he informed that Nigeria is exploring the option of partnership with the private sector to speed up the realization of massive infrastructure upgrade within the shortest possible time. Even with relative stability in oil production and price in the international market, the nation's foreign reserves has been shrinking. The stock of the National Reserve lost about 270 million US dollars in the last one week from 24.23 billion dollars. It has also lost about 920 million US dollars in the last one month from 24.87 billion US dollars. This market watch has blamed on an unrelenting huge appetite for dollars by importers and others. The Director General of the West African Institute for Financial and Economic Management, Professor Akman Eko, said the cause of the depletion amid relative stable price and production is still the case of demand and supply. The demand for foreign exchange is still bigger than the supply, and within these periods, prices and production have been hovering as well. I quote, you cannot plan with uncertainty. What the government can do at best now is to ration. It cannot also stop entirely from spending the ones that came in. It is a matter of the quantity that came in and the quantity that people are asking for. If you spend and do not replenish more than you spend and the reserves, well, the reserves will definitely lose level, unquote. Reiterating that government should now step up negotiations with the militants to ensure stability of productions to take advantage of any favorable price, he also urged government to look the direction of cheap international funds. Meanwhile, the Department of Petroleum Resources has at Friday put the country's current crude oil and condensate production at between 1.8 million barrels per day. This is, however, a leap from 1.77 million barrels per day the country produced in June this year. Total export proceeds of $212.25 million were recorded in July 2016 as received against $219.26 million in June 2016. Now, Greenwich Partners, a French investment firm that specializes in renewable energy in sub-Saharan Africa has announced that it plans to build two 50 megawatt solar power plants in northern Nigeria. Speaking from Paris, Charlotte Obin Kalajian, Greenwich Partner CEO, said the plants are expected to cost between $130 million and $150 million with construction work commencing next year. Obin Kalajian said one of the plants would be located in Kaduna State. But she declined to reveal the location for the second plant. Both plants will be connected to the national grid, she said. Aside from the solar plants in northern Nigeria, the Greenwich boss further said the company is currently developing off-grid solar projects for Nigerian businesses, including a bank with 350 branches and 2,000 telecom towers. Nigeria is very interested, is, is, is a very interested, interesting market as it presents all the characteristics they are looking for with regard to energy, Auburn Kalajian said. There's a high de dependence on fuel, oil, and diesel, which are expensive and unreliable sources of energy. And there's political will, there's a political will to develop solar energy, especially in the northern regions where gas is less available. The federal government of Nigeria is currently aiming to diversify the country's electricity supply away from gas to other alternative sources, including solar power, in a bid to end chronic electricity shortages in Africa's largest economy. In July, the Nigerian bulk electricity trading company signed power purchase agreements with 12 firms for the construction of solar power plants with a total capacity of 975 megawatts at an estimated cost of 2.5 billion US dollars. Greenwich solar plants in Nigeria are part of the company's plan to develop 600 megawatts of renewable energy assets in sub-Saharan Africa by 2020 for about 1 billion US dollars. Obin Kalajan told the, the press. The company has on-grid and off-grid projects in Guinea, Burkina Faso and Ivory Coast with plans to open an office in Kenya. Later this month, the company will inaugurate a 20 megawatt solar power plant in Senegal, which will provide electricity 
to 160 people through the country's national grid. Greenwich Partners was founded in 2010 by Aubin Kalajan to build a renewable energy investment platform dedicated to Sub-Saharan Africa. In June this year, Denham Capital, a U.S. private equity firm, committed about 250 million U.S. dollars to fund Greenwich projects across Africa. We take a short break now. When we come back, we give you more and more on the capital market as well as the commodities exchange market. Don't go away. We'll be right back. From the heartbeat of northern Nigeria's political capital, Kaduna, comes a new and refreshing television station, Liberty Television on Star Times Channel 180. Liberty Television will open up a new vista in news and programming for the whole country, but with special emphasis on issues and events north of the Niger. Liberty Television brings you fresh stories as they break with accuracy, fairness, and objectivity in government, politics, business, and the money market. Sizzling hot. Take a peek into Nigeria's vast northern civilization and culture. Enjoy music and entertainment. Liberty Television coming to your homes 24-7 in Hausa and English. Connect us on the Star Times Bouquet Channel 180 today. Liberty Television, voice for all. Welcome back. There may be a fresh increase of over 200% in electricity tariff being paid by residential customers if a proposal by power distribution companies to raise the average energy charge to 105 naira per kilowatt hour from the current rate of 22.8 kilowatt hour as if, if it is approved. This is coming less than eight months after about 45% increase in tariff was imposed on electricity consumers nationwide. The power firms attributed their latest push for tariff increase to high inflation rates in the country, scarcity of foreign exchange, devaluation of the Naira, and the huge debt being owed them. Already, the discourse said they had entered the Nigerian Electricity Regulatory Commission about the proposal, but no action had been taken on it yet. The Chief Executive Officer Association of Nigerian Electricity Distributors, an umbrella body for the discourse, Mr. Azu Obiaya, confirmed the latest agitation for tariff increase in an interview with the press, stressing that it, it was important to raise the tariff in order to remain in business and serve the people well. As you said, to review the tariff, they will be looking at an average rate of 70 naira per kilowatt hour for residential consumers. But some discos will like to have the rate as high as 105 kilo, uh, naira per kilowatt hour. Each disco has a fixed energy charge payable by its customers. The highest charge, according to documents from National Electricity Regulatory, Regulatory Commission for the year 2016, is 32 naira 26 kubo per kilowatt hour, and this is payable by R2 consumers under uh, other distribution companies. A further analysis shows that the average energy charge for all the 11 discos is 22 naira 8 kubo per kilowatt hour. But the discos were said not to be comfortable with the current rate, as they argue that it was not cost effective and was hampering the required expansion of infrastructure as well as the smooth flow of operations. Azu, who spoke on the sidelines of a power dialogue in Abuja last Thursday, said the debt owed power distribution companies by private homes, businesses and government ministries, departments and agencies post-privatization amounted to 568 billion naira. He also stated that one reason many discos had not metered their customers was due to the huge debts owed them as well as the tariff issue. This, he said, had hampered the operations of the different discos, a development that had made it difficult for the companies to meet the funds remittance required of them by the market operators. Obiaya said discos are experiencing revenue shortfall on a monthly basis of $38 billion billion naira, as of June 2016. The MDS owed the discos $53 billion naira post privatization and that the books of the discos are so bad that they have no chance anymore to access finance. 
these books do not reflect the cash flow that is necessary for them to be taken seriously by any lender. The Federation of Informal Workers Organization of Nigeria says the interest on the voluntary contributions by its members will not be commensurate with the current inflationary rate in the country. The General Secretary of FIWON, Mr. Benga Komolafe, said the inflation rate of 17.9% for September 2016 had raised consumer spending, those making their expenses on basic needs unbearably high due to the generally low and irregular incomes of the formal, informal sector workers and persons who are self-employed, the micro-pension plan, a part of the 2014 Pension Reforms Act, was introduced to ensure their financial security. The scheme is meant to incorporate tailors, artisans, hairdressers, carpenters, those in the entertainment industry, among others, in a bid to grow the pension assets. But Pencom had embarked on awareness campaigns in 2015 to sensitize players in the informal sector through their associations to the benefits of the scheme ahead of its commencement. In addition, a department for the micro pension was created to drive its implementation and provide customer service for those to be covered under the plan. But Komalafi said under the contributory pension scheme in the private and public sectors, workers were being encouraged to contribute 8% of their monthly salary while their employers contribute 10%. He said workers could show interest in the scheme if the state governments would be willing to contribute the same amount paid on behalf of their employees for, their, for those informal workers. Now, PENCOM should be part of the advocacy to fund the informal sector contribution. If a carpenter is contributing 1,000 Naira per month, the state government should also support with another 1,000 Naira per month, he added. Now, the World Bank says the worth of its running projects in the agricultural sector in Nigeria is 1.5 billion US dollars. The chief agri-economist of the organization, Dr. Ade Tunji already paid, made this known to newsmen at a live video conference to celebrate the end of Poverty Day. He said that in Africa, the bank's strategy to ending extreme poverty and boosting prosperity was through investment in agriculture. He said that the bank dedicated 10% of its total portfolio in Nigeria to agriculture. He explained that the World Bank had invested $495 million in irrigation, $450 million in its Fadama development project, and $150 million on other commercial agriculture projects. Already been said that the bank has also has a $50 million intervention fund for the resuscitation of the Northeast. He said the key message is that they are making progress towards their goals, but it is still a tough road ahead. Extreme poverty continues to decline, but remains unacceptably high. Meanwhile, the Vice President of Africa Region World Bank, Mr. Maktar Dio, said a vibrant, sustainable and resilient agricultural sector was vital for Sub-Saharan Africa's economic future. He said that a study of the World Bank has shown that while productivity of African agriculture has grown, it still lags behind Asia and Latin America. He said investments in rural public goods combined with better policies and institutions drive agricultural productivity growth. The dividends from investments to strengthen markets, develop and disseminate improved technologies and expand irrigation can be enormous. Similarly, improvement of the policy environment through trade and regulatory policy complements spending by enhancing incentives for producers and innovators to take advantage of public goods thereby crowding in private investment. Reforming the design and implementation of these subsidy programs will, while prioritizing government spending in favor of high return core public goods and policies could produce significant gains. Now, the National Bureau of Statistics last weekend put the figures for the Consumer Price Index, which, fish, which measures inflation in September at 17.9%. The September inflation represented an increase by 0.24% from 17.61% of the previous month. In releasing the data, the MBS attributed the rise in inflation mainly to increases in the sub-food index as well as energy prices. Well, it appears we are running out of time, so 
we are going to have to close this program here. We like to inform you once again that we are live on Go TV channel 110. However, as I leave you with the graphics of the review of the cap uh, activities on the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange last week and the Commodities Exchange, I urge you to join me again tomorrow for another fresh edition of the package. Many thanks indeed for watching. I am Omar Kaltungo.